Hi everyone, my name is Marietta and I'm joining you all today from Vancouver, Canada. I work as staff software engineer at Uplight. In my free time, I contribute to open source projects. I'm one of the Python core developers, a PSF fellow member, and one of the co-organizers of Vancouver Pyrenees. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub as Marietta. Documentation makes or breaks an open source project. When users want to use the open source library that you've made, the documentation is the first thing they'll read, not the code. Often when evaluating a third-party library, we'd look at the documentation first, and if it doesn't exist or it's not adequate, we probably don't want to use it. We, we will not bother looking at the code at all. So maintainers and contributors to open source projects need to care about documentation. In the Python world, documentation isn't written simply in a readme. The fact that Python documentation is available on a website in HTML format with links and things you can search for, it is what makes it useful for all of us. I really don't think I'll ever get very far in learning Python if this whole documentation was in a plain text readme file. And we're not writing all of this documentation with plain HTML either. Python documentation is built using a tool called Sphinx and a markup language called restructured text. So when talking about documentation in the Python community, you'll hear these two names um, together, Sphinx and restructured text. And you might wonder, what, what exactly are these two, two tools? I'll start with restructured text. Restructured text is a markup language. Um, you're probably familiar with other markup languages like Markdown or HTML. The file extension of restructured text is RST. This is the file where we will write the content of the documentation. Now, restructured text is actually not as lightweight as Markdown. It's a little bit more complicated, and it is kind of unknown outside of the Python community. Markdown has been more widely adopted, and not just by programmers. I know a lot of people who aren't programmers, and they, they understand Markdown. Sphinx is the documentation generator. It is the engine that converts all of the RST files into HTML files. You would then host the HTML files generated by Sphinx. So readers would only be reading the output of the HTML files and not the restructured text. So now, hold on, wait a minute. Just now I said restructured text is more complicated than Markdown and it's kind of obscure. So you might wonder now, like, why is Python using this? And I've talked to some Pythonistas, they've never even heard of restructured text. They haven't been contributing to Python projects, so they, they didn't need to know restructured text. I've also heard people telling me that the fact that restructured text is so obscure, it is a barrier to people wanting to contribute to Python. So one of their suggestions was that maybe we should start using Markdown for our documentation. The thing is, Python has been using restructured text since way back in 2002, before Markdown even existed. And you can read more about this on PAP 287, which is the proposal for adopting restructured text as Python doc string format. Nowadays, we, we write pretty much everything in restructured text. Official Python documentation is in restructured text. Python enhancements proposals, the PAPs, are written in restructured text. So if you ever have a big great idea for Python, you need to write the PAP for it one day. You need to know how to write, write it in restructured text. And it's not just CPython that uses this. Many other Python projects, Pylint, requests, Black, AIO HTTP, Python packaging, Flask, all of those projects 
their documentation are written in restructured text. So if you ever want to contribute to any of those, you will need to write documentation in restructured text. This is an important and useful skill to have as an open source contributor. Markdown is not bad. It is indeed much simpler and easier to adopt. But having written documentation in both Markdown and Restructured Text, I just don't find Markdown sufficient. It, it lacks certain features. And I think you shouldn't feel intimidated by Restructured Text. Yes, a little, it is a little bit more complicated, but it's not hard. You can learn it. And I want to help lower this barrier by introducing you to some of the features of Restructured Text and Sphinx. Let's start with something easy. Um, so here is the comparison of how you'd write section headers. On the left is how you do it in Restructured Text, and on the right is Markdown. So notice that in Restructured Text, instead of the pound sign, um, you'd add underlines. Now, if I, something to think about, if I simply to present you the text to you without telling you whether these are markdown or restructured text, which one looks more obvious to you that these are section headers? Personally, I found the underlines to be a clearer signal that these are the titles, these are the section headers. The pound sign, if I didn't know that this was a markdown file, I would think that those are code comments, not headers. Next, let's learn how to write hyperlinks. In Markdown, this is how you do it. You wrap the text that you want to convert to links in square brackets and the URL itself in parentheses. In the restructured text, the, the, the syntax looks somewhat different. Um, you, you, wrap the whole, uh, you write the URL in triangular braces and then you wrap the whole thing in back takes, and then there's a, this little underscore. So one of the useful feature with restructured text is that you can name and label your links, allowing for reusability. So if you found yourself referencing the same URLs multiple times in one document, you don't have to write the same links multiple times. You can declare one name for it, like a variable, like a like a variable at the bottom of your documentation by typing out the dot dot and underscore and the name of the URL, the label, followed with the actual URL. And then later in the documentation, you can refer to it by wrapping the name of the link um, with backticks and the underscore after. You can add images by using the image directive. So dot dot space image and the two columns and then pass to the image. Now pay attention to the space and indentation. Um, especially in, in the image directive, there is a space between the two dots and the word image. And I noticed the um, New contributors writing restructured te text the first time, they, they missed that, they missed the space and didn't realize the image didn't render. So space, sp white space and indentation in restructured text are important, just like, just like in Python code. If you're writing technical documentation, so of course your documentation will contain code samples. In restructured text, it's just a matter of adding the two columns. Two columns, a blank space, a blank line, and un after that, indent your code. And then that whole thing will be rendered as a, as a code block. Again, pay attention to the, to the white space. There needs to be an, an empty line between the two columns and the code sample and the code block. And indent, you need to indent it. Indentation and white space are important. Tables are not part of the core definition of Markdown. 
you would need to find an extension or a special markdown renderer that can generate tables for you. But tables are supported natively out of the box in restructured text. Same thing as the table of contents. So if your documentation is long, it has lots of different headings, a table of content would be really useful to the readers. And this is real easy to do. Um, automatically, you just add the contents directive at the top of your documentation. And the table of content will be generated automatically by Sphinx. Um, Sphinx is not dated. This is part of the feature of restructured text. Sorry about that. Um, one of the features that I appreciate the most is the ability to do cross-referencing. Being able to provide links from one page to another page. And this is accomplished by two elements. And you need both restructured text and Sphinx to do this whole thing. So first, you need to declare a target. It's like a bookmark, so notice that the syntax here might look familiar to you. This, this looks just like how we would name our links a few slides earlier. Now, in the other page, say in the, for example, if the, in, in the index, I want to I wanna direct my readers to the installation guide to that specific section of the documentation, I can do that simply by adding the ref row and the name of the target. When the index is generated in HTML, it will have a link pointing to the installation documentation to that specific section. So you don't need to even know what is the file name of the installation. Like you don't need to hard code that path at all. You just need to know the name of the target and Sphinx will build this whole thing for you. Um, that's the, the ref role. So how do we get started with this whole thing? First, you need to install Sphinx. Pip install it. Pip install Sphinx. And I do recommend installing it in a virtual environment. Then in your project, you should have a dedicated directory for your documentation. Don't mix it up with your source code. Have Create a docs directory. You can name it something else, but usually I've seen projects use just docs. Um, once you have the docs directory in there, you can call the you can run the Sphinx quick start command. What Sphinx quick start does is automatically creating several files that are necessary for Sphinx to build the documentation. Once you run the Sphinx quick start command, you should see some um, some directories got generated, the build directory, static, and the templates. You should also see the index RST file automatically created. And then you can start writing your documentation there. When you're re ready to build your docs and to generate the HTML out of your docs, just type make HTML on the terminal. All the HTML will then be generated under the build slash HTML directory. Now you can open the index file with your favorite browser. And if you find it tedious having to rebuild the documentation each time you make code changes, you can install a third party extension called Sphinx Auto Build. This is not part of Sphinx itself, it's a third party. So you would need to install it, pip install Sphinx Auto Build. And then this tool can detect changes in your documentation and automatically rebuild and refresh the browser for you. Other useful extensions you may want to check out are the Autodoc and the InterSphinx extensions. With Autodoc, you can automatically generate documentation out of the doc strings in your code base. With InterSphinx, you can reference not just documentation within your own project, you can reference other projects' documentation. Now, restructured text and Sphinx are really not complicated. You can definitely learn this, and there are various documentation and tutorials out there. 
I do hope that you feel inspired, you feel less intimidated by this, you want to learn it, and then with this new skill, I know that you will be able to start contributing to open source projects and you get to write your documentation better. So thank you so much for listening to my talk. You can follow me on Twitter as Marietta. And if you do, if you appreciate my talks and my open source contributions, one of the ways you can support me is by becoming my sponsor on GitHub. Thank you so much.